just read oh, that. There you go. Are we on? Okay, awesome. On. Um, so a call to order the school board finance committee meeting of January 21st. Um, we are waiting on two more members to join us, but we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to flip the agenda around a little bit, so we'll cover off the Q2 financials first, um, and then go into the budget process update, um, and then end with a conversation about the Eight Corners project and the presentation to town council. Anything else you guys want to add to the agenda? It's quite a bit to cover, but... Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. We just uh, just went on, on the air and... Um, yes, we are live. We were going to flip the schedule because we want to give Alicia a little bit of time to come in on some of the budget stuff, so we thought okay. we'd start with the financials review, which is right. the underneath piece yeah. there for you. Thank you. I'll have to catch up with you later. Okay. Is my email today's like text? Yes, and I emailed you back. Oh, okay. Yeah, just now. <laughs> Okay, you want to take us through this? Yeah, so um, you'll note that you are looking at my usual storytelling version of financial reports. Um, and uh, if you flip to page three, that's where the actual financial document starts. Um, this is laid out in the same way that we have grown accustomed to, which is to show general fund expenditures up front, revenues at the bottom, and then go into the other funds that we're in charge of on the next pages. Um, and the other piece that's pretty standard across this uh, method of reporting that I've come up with is to provide prior year percentages spent um, and received in the columns to the far right on that page to give us sort of a benchmark to see where we're landing. Um, these are obviously really big chunks of the budget and we do sort of hone in on some of the accounts. In my world, you know, we're specifically saying, oh my gosh, this one line is, is over what's going on with this. Um, but we try to keep things fairly high level so that we can just see trends. Um, and I will point out some things that we've been looking at. Um, so I won't read you the story. I think what we've done successfully in the past is to um, just run through this at a meeting, have you guys, if any questions immediately arise, you, you jump them out at me and maybe we can uh, problem solve right at the table. And then otherwise I'll give you a little time to process through and then I will uh, share these with the school board and post them up, um, assuming that everything looks like what you want it to look like. Um, so we're halfway through the fiscal year. Uh, we're also 43% through the school year, remembering that we kick off with the summer months. Um, so our spending patterns are going to be somewhere between 43 and 50 in most cases. Um, there are two big factors in this report that I wanted to call to people's attention, and it's right at the top, um, the second paragraph of the expenditure section there. Um, obviously, the biggest thing that's impacting us, and if you, if you look at page three, you'll see what I'm talking about, is the fact that we're still operating off the expired teacher's contract. So what's happened so far is that we've issued contracts to all of our working teachers, but we've used the old expired wage table, salary table, because we haven't had a new one yet. Um, so what we're paying them is uh, a step increase over the prior year, but it's not the new contract. So it's less than what we would anticipate spending once we actually do have a new contract in, in place. So you'll see in pretty much all of the major categories that have human beings in them, professional staff, um, you see the impact of that where our percentages spent are slightly lower than what we might expect at this time of the year. The other thing that I mentioned um, is uh, a little bit in the weeds. It's in reference to comparing um, fiscal 20 with fiscal year 18. Um, and I'll just grab the first line as an example. Um, the regular instruction programs, you can see that we've got 47.9% spent this, um, this year. Last year was 496 
The year before was 52.2, and if you kind of cast your eyes down, you see we're over 50 in a lot of those categories. And that was a calendar anomaly. Um, what happened in FY18 and a couple years prior to that was that we had three payrolls in December. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, there's two points during the year, two months during the year, where you have an extra payroll, kind of, mm -hmm. if you pay biweekly, um, fitting 26 pays into 12 months. Mm -hmm. So when that payroll lands in December, that winter one, it makes your quarter two numbers go up because you've got a you know million dollar payroll sitting there in uh, more than half of your year. The first half of your year gets bigger, if I can say something that's completely non-mathematical. Um, that went away in fiscal 19 and fiscal 20. Our, two, our three payroll month this year is January, and it was last year as well. So you just don't see that. But I wouldn't want people to think in looking at this and trying to compare with FY18 that for some reason we you know, suddenly started spending less money at this point in the year. Um, the pattern is really quite similar if you take out that payroll change because obviously it's a big expense. It's our biggest expense. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I am going to point out a couple of other variances um, in special education. And again, I'm sort of poking around on, on page three here. Special education is actually even lower than some of the other categories in its spending. Um, you may recall, you probably recall with some clarity, that we added a bunch of ed tech positions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the teacher positions have obviously been filled to start the school year. Um, the special education teachers that we that we hired. But ed techs have been a little more complicated because we've got new students coming in, we're identifying their needs, and we anticipate that we'll have those nine positions needed and filled, but we've been slow in filling them. So in the very in the first months of the year, September through now, we haven't had all of our ed tech positions filled. And I think we're even now we have one that's unfilled. Is that due to a lack of a need or just there isn't the market out there for ed techs? Um, a couple of things, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult to hire qualified ed techs this year. I think the job market being really tight. Mm -hmm. um, we just weren't getting candidates. So there were some positions that we knew needed to be filled, but it was taking us time to actually get them filled. Yeah. We've had a little bit of turnover. We've had a couple people leave after the start of the school year. And then again, you're facing that same problem of, well, who are we going to hire? So I'd say that the hiring rate has slowed. Um, but then the other piece is not so much that we don't have a need, but that if you've got a child that's new to the district, which a lot of these children were, um, the children for whom we anticipated needing to hire ed techs, you need a moment to get them in, figure out what their program is. You know that they're probably going to need a one-to-one, -one, but what does that look like? Mm -hmm. You know, What kind of a person, what sort of skill set do you need? What program do they belong in? Um, so I would say that's probably 25% of it, and the other 75% is just, you know, hiring is hard. Yeah. Finding good folks is hard. Um, my next piece is instructional technology, and I think if you've been looking at these for a while, as some of you have, you know that we have very low numbers in IT in second quarter, and that's because the town actually pays all of that personnel and we do a journal transfer twice a year to pay the town back. So the journal transfer, usually what we'll do is we'll do a July to, a July to December tally and say, you know, here are the people that the school department's paying for, all or part of, and then we'll create a journal transfer that won't get posted until January. Same thing happens in June where we post it. Um, halfway through the year rather than creating a journal transfer every month or every payroll. Is that because we share services with them? Yes, it's because the people who do our IT jobs are for the most part town employees. And so when we budget for IT, Alicia, do you have? I do, thank you. Yeah. Um, and welcome. Thanks. Sorry, I'm late. We're on the financials and we're um, talking about IT right at the moment. My little storytelling piece at the front there has okay. a comment about it. Um, so our IT staff 
work for the town. But we know that a portion of their work is allocated to the schools. So when we budget, we say, I'm going to take you know, half of Aaron and half of Dawn, the director, and half of Michelle, the deputy director, and then all of Jason, because all he ever does is school, and all of Mark. And I'm throwing names out there, which aren't entirely accurate. Um, but what we'll do is we'll work up a spreadsheet to say, this is the portion of everybody that we want to pay for. And then the town will put a price tag on that and say, you need to budget based on our salary tables, our benefit costs. You need to budget X dollars for that person. So the money rides around in our budget, which is why we've got the size of a budget that we do for IT. But we don't actually spend it the way that we normally spend payroll. We don't put these people on payroll. We don't spend it down 26 times during the year. We spend it twice a year. Um, which is why when you look at IT, they're like, you know, in the 20s in terms of their percentage expended where everybody else is in the 40s and 50s. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that, uh, that journal transfer is in the works. We were just identifying, because they had a little bit of turnover too. We were identifying who the personnel mm -hmm. yeah. is, right. is are. And uh, we'll get that done. And you'll see that on, on the third quarter report for sure. I also made a, a note that we um, just made a fairly sizable in, investment in um, laptops for the K-2 teachers. And um, I know Don has, is sort of on the, uh, on the calendar in our minds to talk about tech, and I don't know if that's in the context of his budget or how we'll bring that out. Uh, but he has some kind of different ideas about tech refresh, and I don't know how much you remember about this, but we're, we've always sort of in the past had this four-year plan of, you know, each phase gets their technology refreshed, meaning all new stuff, replacement stuff, uh, once every four years. Um, and Don's thought is a couple of things. One is four years is a long time in technology nowadays, um, and we may be making folks wait until everything breaks isn't the most efficient way to run your programs, especially when we're more dependent on technology, but is there a way to use the same dollars and attack things a little bit differently? So instead of just saying, okay, well, it's your year, so that's all there is, can we look more globally, K-12, and say, well, here's where the real need is. And maybe it's not all of K-2, maybe it's a piece of K-2 and a piece of high school. Um, the other thing that accomplishes, and I'm, I'm not doing him justice because he explains it much better than I do, but the other thing that helps with is if you have K2, 3, 5, 6, 8 high school, you've got four grades at high school, you've got more teachers, so it would eliminate that sort of lump every four years um, by looking at it in a different way. So that all, all said, um, he actually looked at doing some replacement laptops for the K2 teachers this year. Technically, their refresh year is next year, but he's doing it in, in concert with the, some of the testing that they're doing at the high school and thinking about, you know, student devices at the K2s will still be next year, but can we fold some of this together to smooth it out and make it not such a um, sort of programmed chunks of spending that might not necessarily make sense in terms of the technology itself. Does that make it more difficult to anticipate costs? I think it makes it a different plan. It's not the same tech plan, but it's still a plan. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I'm looking forward to, we have our budget meeting, um, department meeting with him on Thursday. Thursday. I can't remember what day Thursday. it is this week. Yeah. Like so far, I think it's Monday all day. Um, and he's going to talk with us a little bit more about his vision of how that will work. And I, I wouldn't say that we, we don't need a plan because we absolutely need a plan because this stuff costs a lot of money. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but the plan may look a little bit different from his perspective. And, and his whole goal in conversations with me has been to make it more predictable and make it more effective than just, oh, we'll wait and see what K2 needs when we get to them kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, we've always looked at a big picture as it's going to be somewhere around half a million dollars to fix a phase, but that's pretty rough. Mm -hmm. And I think he feels like we could be a lot more specific. Okay. Um, all right, so my next little bullet is system administration. 
And this is my like drum roll, please, because we um, talked about in quarter one, we said, well, we had a little bit lower spending because we have this really nice new position that we haven't filled yet. And we filled it. And I'm really excited. Um, we have a young lady called Maria Champagne who is going to be joining us in uh, February. She's getting herself loose from a very important job and uh, giving them a decent amount of notice. And we're building her space upstairs. Mm -hmm. We just tore a bunch of stuff up today. Yeah. I don't know if you were up there, but it's pretty exciting. Um, so that, that will be sort of evening out. Obviously, we'll be starting to spend money in that area, but we also um, won't have spent half of the year. So that'll be a little bit of, bit of a savings, all told. Um, and the other piece in system administration and school administration is all of these exciting shifts that you've been hearing about with some people who were here at the table with us. Mm -hmm. um, we budgeted for Diane as the middle school principal. She's now taken Joanne's place in the central office, which is school mm -hmm. admi administration, system administration in the budget categories. And we're also, we haven't backfilled the middle school principal position yet. We're doing that in, on an interim basis. Right. Um, with where, somebody who was in system Where Kathy was already in system <laughs> administration. So, yeah, it's going to be exciting. And my note here is just that, you know, everything's cool. It's all going to work. But we might need to make some budget transfers at the end of the year between those two categories just to sort of smooth things out. Okay. Um, transportation is actually kind of a, a cool thing. We're doing pretty well on... Contracted transportation, I'm giving you some comp numbers there. Um, but the short version of the story is that we've been able to hang on to staff pretty well. Um, and we're doing pretty well at driving our own kids where they need to go every day. Really reduced our dependence on contracted um, transportation. Um, and we're kind of almost back to the good old days where we were really only using contracted transportation once in a while or, you know, for some Special of the more... sports or... Right, or some of the more, like, <coughs> super small short trips for special services and things like that. Um, but that's a that's a bonus and, and a pleasant thing to know. Yeah, that's great. How, how close are we to being at full capacity for our drivers? I think we have one open position or do we have two? I have to, I'd have to go back yeah, and count. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. I know that we had some, we had one or two drivers that were also out, like, on a leave of absence, right? Like, on, so we're I'm looking at things. you blankly because yeah. I honestly can't remember, but mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, I'm sure that we could definitely use one more. I think we might have two more. Um, and when I do the budget meeting with Sarah, which is tomorrow, right? We'll be talking about, you know, who's on staff and what's your actual full count look like. Mm -hmm. I think it was, we said that 22 or 23 was a full component. Right, and I know Sarah talked to me today about setting up an interview with a, another potential candidate. Okay. Oh, that's so, cool. yeah. you know, so they continue to roll yeah, in. Good. That's yeah, good. and, you know, we're doing a lot of things to try to, to mm -hmm. encourage people to, right. to apply. Lots yep. of, you know, training opportunities and... Right. Signing bonuses and all these things that you hear other districts. But really trying about. to act on them as soon as they're coming in instead yeah. of stockpiling them, right? Waiting because you're going to lose a candidate if you just wait until you have X number of people that yeah. you want to interview, right? Yeah. Not in the stock market. Yeah. No, Seriously. exactly. You, you want to snag them, snag yeah. them quick. Yeah. Okay, quick question. You have to refresh my memory on this, but when we, I, th I think this is, the answer of this, to this is in here, but like when we built the budget for transportation last year, it was built off of not having to contract to the amount that we did last year, right? So this is based off of where we're using our own drivers. Yeah. So there shouldn't be at the end of the year if everything stays as is, we should be we shouldn't we shouldn't have a big we shouldn't have a big surplus. Okay. No, no. What we thought was that if all things being equal, we would rather put the money into salaries and benefits for our actual employees, and then. What ended up happening last year was that because we, we had surplus in the wage and benefit lines, we spent that surplus on the contractor because yeah. that was the way that worked out. Yeah, but yes. you're right. When we were thinking about the budget, we were thinking best case scenario was put the money towards having enough drivers, mm -hmm. and we funded some open positions, yeah. and those are the ones that we've been able right. to, to start filling down. Okay. So, yeah. 
Um, all right, so on page two and at the bottom of page three is your revenue chunk. Um, it's always, you know, kind of good news, bad news that the town of Scarborough gives us all the money that we need to run our department it's because we have all the money that we need to run our departments. Um, state subsidy is obviously the next biggest contributor, and I did make a couple notes about the fact that last year we were talking about not having $40,000 in subsidy that we were expecting to get because of the Greater Sebago Alliance vote, mm -hmm. and this year we do have it, and it's uh, over $83,000. So we're really grateful and happy and excited that we're not losing $83,000 in subsidy this year. Um, there is the impact of main care seed payments, which is, I've tried to explain it like really unsuccessfully sometimes, but April got it. So. Well, yeah, I wouldn't say unsuccessfully. It's like complicated. I always feel very, yeah, no, I always feel very really, goofy when I'm trying to describe what it is. It's, it's really complicated that they they withdraw the payment and then we reimburse and then some and then that's not even the way they used to do it and yeah it's a, it's a little squirrely but for for Diane's benefit I'll just say that um, the state in its wisdom decided some years ago that districts and special purpose private schools special education that were billing to main care weren't doing it right mm -hmm. and that the special purpose schools were supposed to be asking for more from the local school districts, sending school districts, to make sure that we were actually doing our share to get those federal dollars. And so the state decided that they would simply deduct money from the school subsidy and give it to main care. So instead of, um, let's say, right, so I send a have child as much to money Margaret changing Murphy. hands. Right, I send a kid to Margaret Murphy, and instead of Margaret Murphy billing me for main care seed, which mm -hmm. is like the yep. money you have to put up to, to get your grant, they, um, and then they pass it on to main care, or they don't bill main care that much, the state has sort of taken over that piece. So ideally, what would happen mm -hmm. is that you would have money coming out of your subsidy on the revenue side, and then when you get your bill from the special purpose private school, it wouldn't be so much in your tuition, it would be less in your tuition. Right. Um, you know, and, and we haven't really come to terms with how to guess what that's going to look like. And it mm -hmm. bugs the heck out of me as an accounting person because you don't want it on two sides of the balance sheet. Right. If you so have an you expenditure really problem, don't put it on my revenue. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't listen to me. So. <laughs> so what it means is that we have to watch what we're losing in subsidy because that's lost revenue. And last year it amounted to $150,000, which is a lot. Right. Um, you know, in, in the mm -hmm. grand scheme of things, it didn't change our lives, but it's, you know, it's, it's money that we're, we're counting on. This year it looks to be a little bit lower. We're at $21,500 of reduction right now. Um, at the end of quarter two, but they do it, they, they review it quarterly. So I'm, my eye on that to see what that's going to look like because it's definitely going to be a revenue shortfall. We've said we're getting X dollars from subsidy, and they're saying, "Oh no, but wait, we're going to take this little bits out of it each month." Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So we need someone in Augusta to understand that and make that different because I hate that. Um, other funds, adult ads got a positive fund balance, uh, mostly due to tax dollars up front. I've noticed, um, and I mentioned this, I think, in our last report, that there's a kind of a shift in the old school version of adult ed where we had the fall catalog and the spring catalog and we had fall revenues and spring revenues, and it's all sort of school year based. Um, what Joan Tremberth has tried to do is to be more responsive to the needs of the community. And so these workforce programs that we've talked about a lot, um, the CNA program mm -hmm. especially, uh, but med techs and um, and um, pharma techs and all of the sort of working um, skills training programs that they've done. Also, English language learners programs, which I think I called literacy programs in here, programs for non-native speakers of English. She's moved a lot of those into the summer, and she's basically made it a year-round program, which we really weren't doing. We were kind of like, you know, we're not here. We're on vacation. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but again, trying to be responsive to the community and say, well, if you need your CNA and they want to give you a job and you have to wait around until November to get in a class, then you know that's not really benefiting our community. So it, what it's done is it, it's kind of, um, I think it's messed up my understanding of how we do revenues and expenditures a little bit. Um, but I, I'm, I'm learning, and I think that our revenues were actually much higher at the end of the year last year, um, at what I would consider to be the end of the fiscal year, when I would think I would be all done, they were paying for summer programs. So I'm, I'm kind of keeping an eye on learning that. We also got a couple of grants, um, which Joan, again, kudos to Joan Tremberth, because she's out there beating the bushes for money. Um, we received $2,000, 22 29 I added a line in there for a literacy grant that's federal money, and she's also working on um, two other grants and trying to pull in some money that way. That's great. Yeah, very cool. Um, school nutrition, again, a little bit of a learning curve in terms of what's going on with the high school not being in the program. So I noticed that our projections of state and federal revenues are pretty much on target compared with prior years. Um, and my, my assumption is that we're going to be seeing less coming from the state because we're not claiming for high school meals, but hopefully more coming from high school sales, food sales. Um, I'm working with Peter on some sales financial data specific to the high school that we can talk about as we're getting into the budget, um, budget conversations about school nutrition. And, um, just in what I was looking at in quarter, quarters one and two, it's really quarter two because summer there's not that much happening, but it looked to me like um, there were some interesting patterns developing, like sales numbers were up at the high school. Um, I, I'm digging out numbers from just reviewing some stuff really quickly, but it was you know up maybe 20, 25 grand just in this few months of the school year. Um, I noticed that Meals, reimbursable meals, as they're counted by the state, were actually down, but the a la carte, which means just go and get whatever you want, um, was way up. And sales from a la carte were way up. And that, that kind of makes sense. It's reflective of the kind of new things that they're trying and trying to get the kids interested. Um, a la carte would include all of the after school stuff that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to give kids you know, the opportunity to have a meal or a snack between school and um, sports or work or other activities. Um, so we're gonna try to pull together as much data as we can as we're talking about that in budget time. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> um, because we also have in the back of our minds, is this a good choice? You know, yeah. was, it a, was it the right thing to do to take the high school out of right. the program? Because we can always go back if we don't think so. Um, and the other piece that I made a note of is uh, the, the new statute regarding food shaming, and I don't know the proper name of that statute, but we had a little presentation from mm -hmm. Peter some time ago about, um, about it, and the intent of it is absolutely what we want. We do not want to be having adults speaking to children about their bank balance or mm -hmm. about their ability to pay for food. We want the kids to have food. Um, I think what I've called an unintended consequence of the law um, that I'm starting to hear from other business managers and from Peter being at Cape in here is that um, our unpaid balances are going up a little bit um, where a kid is running into the red more on their school lunch account and so it's hard to determine cause and effect of that is it does it mean that people are struggling to pay their bills does it mean that they know that they don't have to pay their bills um, is it maybe a little of both? Um, but it's something that I think we're going to have to keep in mind. I've been talking with my colleague over at CAPE a little bit about it um, because obviously we're, right. we're sharing Peter and sharing, mm -hmm. sharing a lot of things. Um, but you know, if we're not able to collect that revenue, then you know, does that impact our program? Does that, does that mean that we're trying to do something more aggressive to collect money or does that go against our principles or you know it's, mm -hmm. there's some some interesting questions there but I think we got to see the order of magnitude of it first okay. um, 
so that's all kinds of little interesting thoughts. Um, federal grants, if you're, now I'm, I've moved on to page four here. I didn't mention that. Before you move on, can I ask you a question? What, what's our procedure just generally if kids owe money to the school about moving forward in the year and then at the end when they graduate? So the, the trick is that we do not talk to children about money. Um, and we wouldn't have done that in the first place, but now we don't do it because it's a law. Um, so the outreach piece goes to parents. There's a parent associated with every student's lunch account, a parent or a guardian. And so the way that our system is set up is that if the um, child's account goes into the red, then an email will be sent out to the parent it's automatically generated by the lunchtime system, which is the point of sale system we use in school lunch. And parents can also proactively set up an alert if they want to on their account. And I did this when my daughter was in school that said, you know, when her account goes below $20, I get an email. It says, hey, you, you know, you're going to need to put some money in there. What about generally, though, if you owe money? Let's say you lost a book. From the oh, library. okay, not or just technology. for school. Yeah, or, yeah, technology. Yeah. What, what, how do we handle those types of debts? Um, technology, uh, I think it's it's a little bit of a case-by-case. Case. Um, and, you know, Diane, jump in if you think mm -hmm. differently for me. But, like, technology, when the kids are turning in their laptops at the end of the year to be re-imaged, um, those who get to take them home, if a piece is missing or they don't have it or what have you, then they'll actually be billed for it um, and they'll be expected to pay for whatever's missing before they reissue their laptop in the right. fall. Right, and that goes like home via mail, right? Mm -hmm. So again, it's, you know, the intention is that it's an adult to adult conversation, mm -hmm. right. not, not putting the kids in the middle. Just, right. Yeah. And that's and effective. I, I think for the most part, it's been very effective. Like I'll use as a middle school example, chargers <coughs> right they float away mm -hmm. the chargers yeah. that just go missing i think there's some kids that might eat chargers <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> or the socks. <laughs> right. um, but i think for the most part we've been really successful when we've sent those home and you know said we didn't receive your child's charger either one the charger reappears right. or they you know or it. we yeah. uh, a parent will send in the funding for that um, and as Kate said, I think we still do look at things on a case-by-case mm -hmm. -case basis. And so, you know, if, if a family doesn't have the ability to pay, obviously that doesn't impact that student's ability to use technology in the next year, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's but. one of the things that's very difficult to, um, to talk about because, you know, how am I to say... You're not paying your school lunch bill syrup just because you're being a dink, and April really can't afford to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't really have the knowledge of whether it's hard for you or it's not hard for you. So, um, you know, and the same thing if, if I asked you to pay $5 because you lost your library book, is, is that really a hardship for you, or, are you, or is that, right. you know, something that you can do? And like Diane said, usually we'll reach out and say, hey, a kid lost a library book, it cost three bucks to replace it, can you send us three bucks? They'll send us three bucks. Um, we, I, we don't have any policy about you can't graduate till you pay your bills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you don't get your report card, right? right. Like that's how right. it used yeah. to be. Right? Yeah. Back Definitely. in the good old days, right? <laughs> yeah, back in the olden days, it was like you know, you pony up yeah, or you're not getting graduated. Yeah. <laughs> we had to turn in our parking. I distinctly remember this. Uh -oh. We had to turn in our parking tag. Yep. And you and you got you know you and paid you however, had to clean whatever your the parking room. fee was, but then you had to turn in that the tag itself. And I, uh -huh. know, I did you no clean your room where my tag was, and I didn't. I want to tell anybody I didn't know where it was. <laughs> I didn't want to go to the office. Yeah, <laughs> and I ignored the first two notices, and then finally they called my dad. And oh, had, oh that's so yeah. embarrassing. I, I was totally embarrassed. <laughs> well, and you see, this is why <laughs> we have shaming. rules that that's say right. we are not yep. going to shame April yep. by yep. making Just, her the problem. Yep. She's not really the problem. <laughs> Well, for food, it does right? sound like she did. Her her she was a blast for herself. parking. I think she's right. A problem. My dad is yelling at the TV right now. <laughs> as we speak. She oh lost that tag. Never found it. She still owes me five bucks. Thank you for 
going into that one. You're later. welcome. And then at the end of this, we talk about capital projects. Um, there's That's the last page of the report. Um, and of course, in quarter two, we're in, we're in full steam in school doing stuff. So we try to wait for school breaks to do anything significant. Mm -hmm. But um, we do have the budgeted second set of two classrooms for eight corners. And I think we have long range finance, uh, long range planning this week. Do we? yes. Again, I'm Thursday. completely mixed up. Right. But, um, yeah. Everything's Thursday. I was going to say, it's I all Thursday. 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 All Thursday. We're all Thursday. so busy on Thursday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just assume that it's Thursday. Um, so I'm sure uh, Todd will be talking about that, but we have ordered up the classrooms for eight corners, and we've got some site planning stuff happening at Pleasant Hill. So mm -hmm. it just looks like those numbers are playing out. Yep, they are. And, and the numbers that we have in the budget, you think, are sufficient for the current cost of that work? Yes. Um, yeah, having learned what we've learned, um, we've, got, uh, we've got sufficient funds for the portables themselves, which is what needs to be front-loaded, and we've got room to also do some planning and site work at Pleasant Hill. The corners is kind of cool because we basically just got to order those little square boxes and yeah. plunk them in there because all the hard work's already been done. Um, and then furnish them and so forth. So we've got that in our budget. We've got that planned out. Okay. We can talk to Todd about this more on Thursday too, because I mean, the, one of the other agenda items was prep for the the workshop with town council, mm -hmm. where we asked for the impact fees. And one of the things we had discussed was like, if if we know now that we're not going to have enough in our budget for the portions mm -hmm. that we need, then should right. we just ask for that all right. made up at yeah, once? Yeah, make it one big ask. So we have about three, two weeks to come up with that? When 12th. is the workshop? So the 12th of is that the one that's about enrollment? and yeah. Right. Yeah. It's three separate workshops for an hour apiece. Yeah. Is it now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The so trifecta. Do I have all yeah. three of them in my... I don't it's know, it's just one invite. invite. Yeah. For three, it's six to nine. Bliss on the twelve. Hours. <laughs> I'll check my calendar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, I'm getting my teeth cleaned. Yeah. Uh, Leanne said you were on the. Invite. Yeah, she said she she, she, she definitely, yeah. and I I know that date, and I actually even have it on our budget calendar. I think as a thing. So. Okay. So um, immediate thoughts, questions, wonders about this, and as I said before you guys came in, I think um, I'll leave these out there so you can take them away and spend a minute if you want to before I post them and share them with the rest of the school board. So if anything pops into your mind in the next two days, let me know, and then, like by the end of the week I can post them up. Okay. What's, the, what's the plan for Pleasant Hill for, for date for installation on that? For the portable, mm -hmm. the what do we call them now? The trailer pack. Mm -hmm. um, so the hope is that we will be able to order something this spring and have it ready for occupation next fall. Um, the first, the preliminary piece was getting out there and getting some quotes on what, it, where it would go mm -hmm. and what kind of site work would need to be done to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Todd will speak to that, Have you been um, talking about that on Thursday. Thursday. What's that? Have you been talking about that at Long Range? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's a more complicated site than Eight Corners, right? Because yeah, of the land work. Where the old portable was is now teacher parking, which is only like half a dozen spaces or something, but it, there's no direct access to it. You have to go through an yeah, interior Yeah, Todd's plan doesn't take into door. account, like, taking over any parking. Oh, good. Yeah, I the... Long -range planning. I yep. Well, and, and I'm sure anymore. he'll, he'll solution, talk more about it, but he came up, he and, and I think it was Goral Palmer or Harriman walking the site were like, well, why don't you just put it on the end of the existing, existing one. corridor? Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's enough room to put something out there if they do some of the clearing in the woods, but right. that I eliminates what you so many issues. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. They didn't. Know they'd what have they were to fill in some land. Mm -hmm. they didn't know what they were, oh, that's good. They we're going to get better at estimating land. costs at the rate we're going. Well, right. that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I want to ask Todd. So maybe I'll just drop him a note and see if he can have that for a meeting Thursday. And if he can't, 
if he thinks he'll be able to have it before our workshop. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and again, you we, know, we've, we've learned so much from what yeah. happened at Eight Corners. I think right, the like, Do we need a covered walkway? Do we right. include well, the cost of that? Well, like, I was just at Eight Corners today. Like, that is a very nice covered walkway that they have created over there. Totally like, kind could we make generous. a giant one of these over at the middle school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should, right? Like, I can think it would have to be like super where tall because are, all these sorry. like vehicles would have yeah, to be able go. to oh, drive course, underneath it to get vehicles. to the cafeteria or the dumpsters, etc. Just put like a big but drone on one it's, side. That was the irony of that discussion was that the middle school's been Mm-hmm. Walking outside all the yeah. time for years, but, but it was the age smaller. of kids, yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, it yeah. wasn't. It was the age, and it was the fact that they would have to be accompanied. Mm-hmm. You know, where the middle school kids, they're grown and they can do it on their own. Although I worry about them. They're the 11. middle school kids walking. Yeah, yeah. They're eleven. They're old. <laughs> they're young. They should have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> they're driving, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Oh, you have a sixth grade. Yeah, not driving a car. No. <laughs> I hope not. Scary. <laughs> so, yeah, we can parse that all out in terms of cool. what we're expecting, what's in the budget, and, you know, what we've learned about what we need to do. But the beauty part of if it is atta- able to be attached to the existing building, then you don't have all the plumbing and yeah, the sprinklers and the... It's a happy update. Um, and the uh, walkway, pathway, right. handicap right. railings, all that kind all of stuff. Oh, the sprinkler system is not... Well, it would be connected would to the existing oh, oh, one, oh, so okay. you don't have to build a whole yeah. new one. It wasn't so much the pipes to drop the water into the room as it was the system to it's create it. And, right, right. Yeah. Like, to pump it and everything. Cool. So should we just dovetail this right into the eight cars conversation? Because I Go think it, it could be pretty quick. Sure, um, sure, sure. So I, the, have, I have some new numbers here. Awesome. So while you're handing that out, the two things that Leanne asked me to confirm with you guys was for our workshop, um, what we want to present and who do we want to present it. So should it be the finance committee, should it be a tag team between us and Nick, or do we want just Kate and Todd to do it? Um, her suggestion was that we just cover why the numbers come are coming in higher than they are and why we want to use the impact fees, all things that we've discussed in the past. Um, but just sort of a refresher for them. I I would I would personally like to add to that a like maybe like a one slide brief history as to why we are which I know is nauseating to think about. But there are some members on the town council who we are new. have that. Well, I'm just thinking. Last time we we abbreviated our slide deck, it was a problem. Yeah, yeah. That's there's true. no re- no problem with over yeah. 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 So Cover we're meeting with except that this council. is our three of a. Th- three-hour workshop and people are going to be like at eight o'clock at night like why do you have four slides well i think that well, i'm just going to be exactly i'm fine with it i just remember yeah the yeah. reception of yeah. right you don't want of to, trying to respect their time also. the um yeah. the general feedback that i have gotten from various town council members is that they would they are more accustomed to their staff presenting to them and that may be part of the tension that we feel as a board comes from the fact that we end up doing the presentations. Okay. And so I just to put that out there as mm-hmm. something that we can discuss as yeah. a group. Sure. Like huh. that's interesting. It, it, it hadn't, hadn't occurred I to me. I know. No. I didn't so even like, like think if, of it. If, like we feel defensive because we're we the one are the ones who have mm-hmm. put the time into the right. slide deck and we've put all this stuff together and we think we're being so clear. And they start to ask questions, and it feels, you know. So if Kate and Todd did the presentation, then you could just speak to it as a board versus trying to present it as our own. Mm -hmm. We could just give the meat in the sample. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Everybody loves the meat. That's that's the That's the bread. So I did want to put that out there that that they are more accustomed to hearing, you know, Facts can I, can and datas I, and figures. Are you okay with that? Uh, sure. Yeah. Can I ask the the um, what I consider to be the elephant in the room question, and that is, do we really want to do this? Do we feel like, I mean, in in our past conversations, we've been like, yep, this is what impact fees are for. This is what it's all about. We need to go out and make this ask. Are we... Um, doing so at the risk of having our colleagues on the town council be like, oh, geez, you know, these people don't know what they're doing. 
at which point then we also have to come back to them with our new budget. I feel which... like I feel like we're on the receiving end of a lot of changes in the schools mm -hmm. and and that it's been very hard to predict that obviously and it's been rapidly changing and um, and I do feel like that's what it what it's there for and if they don't feel agree that it's appropriate to, to come out of that fund then at least they'll have that information going into the budget season is okay. is my perspective I mean I, I I agree I get that thought process about yeah, that. it's just a wonder, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I, I know it's that we're going to have a dance with some new folks and yeah. that we want them to respect us and to think that we're capable and know what the heck we're talking about when we're bringing them a budget. And they're obviously they're not going to be able to be as in depth with it as we are. And mm -hmm. so, you know, is it do we want to have this be our kickoff to our new relationship with them now? The cool thing is that it's part of the three-hour conversation, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, because if it were just like you know they're having a meeting and we show up and say you know please sir may I have some more, right? That's a little bit yes. different from hey Changes we're all the problem solving total around dynamic, the yeah. yeah, right. And to really uh, we're going to have the time to really speak to the enrollment projections, and Rebecca Wandel is going to be providing that overview. She's coming to yep. oh, she is going to be in the first good. hour Great. to provide just kind of like that snapshot mm -hmm. of here's what the enrollment projection report looked like mm -hmm. when I presented it in, you know, January of 2019 and here's how it's played out to date. Um, which I think yeah. it really has delivered. It's amazing. Um, it really is remarkable. And then, you know, she how, charge twice. how can we take that information <laughs> and use that to plan ahead, right? Because last year at this time, we were just talking about, oh my gosh, this enrollment projection report says we're going to have all these new kids coming to town. We need this portable, and we hadn't planned for it. Right. Because right? we had just got those projections. And, and now, very you know, yeah. in this year's budget, we knew about it, and so we did take some proactive steps to plan for it. And so we have those, you know, the money set aside for... Right. Eight corners and for Pleasant Hill for the We're coming not year. Behind the eight ball on that, but we certainly, as right. we go forward into planning in the next year's budget, it's again, you know, going to be mm -hmm. well. What about class sizes and staffing and right? Um, yeah. yeah. So. I think um, you know we're asking for these based off of our interpretation of the impact fees, and if mm -hmm. they are not approved then we really need to all come together and review the language and the impact what does because that it's our really belief say? that right. this is a perfect example for how we use that money well, now, I think it, uh, it also becomes hard for us to be able to put out a budget for the coming year that stays at an agreed amount amount or percentage when our enrollment is growing you know yeah. by X amount yeah. right yeah. because that percentage increase is based on like level services funding, all things remaining constant, right? This is how much money we would need. Mm -hmm. And so if we're adding 100 students or more, yeah, there's obviously a cost that's associated with that that's yep. above and beyond. Right. right you know. Well, and to speak to Sarah's point, like, well, if this doesn't qualify, does. You know, as the general group, if purpose? we can't come to an agreement about whether or not this qualifies and our body thinks it does and theirs doesn't, then there is some language there that's obviously, you know, left to interpretation and, you, need you to know, get we need to figure what out what, well, what in the future, what projects would you be more open or receptive to us presenting because... I, the dog and pony show. Right? right. I mean, let's cut right through it. Yeah. Like, well, this haven't, is, this haven't is, they have already agreed that it does qualify because they've already yes. used it for that once? So yeah. I, I think that that argument is maybe not necessarily the argument that they could use more um, over our intent has always been to use it to put towards debt service. And that's what we want to do. And we want you to predict it better. I mean, I think that that yep. is something that they could do. And I, and it's also within their discretion. I mean, but I think that, you know, and this is where I feel attention, oh, but the growth has been so unpredictable and so it, 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 so 
unpredictably impacting us, that it's made it very difficult for that to occur. For us to properly budget. I would be really interested to hear, and I'm definitely looking forward to this workshop because I think that it's what Diane said. Last year, we had just commissioned this study. It came out in January of last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. January 17th, and, we were presented. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we all read it and went, oh, old projections? Wow, not so great. New projections? Holy cow. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that, we were backed against the wall. We already had a budget, you know, and, and we were expecting to order a portable classroom the next minute. Right. And I think we're in a much better place now. And I think being able to have this kind of proactive conversation with the, with the council and say, okay, what are you guys seeing? You know, are you, you talking about more firefighters or more trash pickup or more? I yeah. mean, you got more citizens, period. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we're all going to be facing challenges and how are we going to problem solve together and not make somebody into the bad guy or the dumb guy yeah. at the yeah. table. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, Alicia, you're absolutely right. They're, it's just a matter of what they would like to use the account for. Yeah. So I kind of derailed that because Sarah was trying to figure out how we're going to present. Well, I, I think if I'm okay with it, what do you? I th I'm okay with you and Todd mm -hmm. presenting. I think April's suggestion is a good one. Let's try it a different way. Um, we could help with the slides. We yeah. already have a lot of the information. It's just kind of repurposing it. I, think, I don't think it needs to be too long. I think we should just be very honest about why why it's higher. There's a couple of main items that we've talked about publicly. The sprinkler system, yeah. which is a bit unpredictable. Um, I think it would go a long way for Todd. I don't want to put him on the spot, but he admitted that it's just the handicap ramp. It's just like an oversight on an his part. An extra thing, yeah. yeah. $14,000 oversight, so yep. he's human, everyone's allowed to make mistakes, but like I think it would be in our in our best interest of just being honest about yeah. well, I mean, and, those and mistakes. mistake or not, I mean, I, I understand that, but mistake or not, it, we still need the money for it, right? I mean, exactly, yeah, but I think just being honest then, about why, right, then right, or and now, yeah. I mean, and I think those sewer impact fees were really we out of the field, yeah. yeah. right? Because I actually was kind of backing those were all in arrears. Exactly. Things. So I, I did want to point out um, mm -hmm. the good news on the sheet is that um, Todd and I went through uh, what I've called FF&E, which is uh, shorthand for furnishings, yeah. furnishings um, and equipment. On the back, it shows furnishings, fixtures, and equipment. We actually saved... $14,244 awesome. from our budgeted amount. So where I had applied a project surplus on the pad and then we had a deficit on the modulars, now I can apply a surplus from um, the furnishings line and drop it down another $14,000, which means that our final deficit is in this big sort of dark box in the yellow yeah. there uh, of $50,000. And then I was sort of playing with the math a little bit. Well, $50,000 is about 19% of the overall amount, which is where people were saying, geez, how can you be off by 19%? But if you take out the sewer amount mm -hmm. and the sprinklers, mm -hmm. you're down to 9% of an, uh, of an overdraft, if you will. And then if you took out another 14000 you know, you'd be down five percent. So, right. a five percent contingency on a large project is not yeah. outrageous. So, if there's if that's helpful to try and frame it in that way of like, you know, we sure we didn't know what we needed, but you know, it's it's not insanity here. These are the reasons. Well, I don't think it should be, think a be a blame. Okay. I'm hoping it won't be a blame. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be okay. I, I think and if we did know what we needed, we just got caught. Off guard. Yeah. There yeah. are going to be there are going to be counselors, I suspect, that want to know why we have an overage, and I presented plainly. These are the reasons. Mm -hmm. There's not anything you can say beyond that. that right. You asked That's why we had an overage, and we're showing it to you, and it's been a public document, and right, it yeah. is what it is. Yeah. yeah. And the other piece is that um, they asked us when we were last sitting with joint finance to identify, well, what would happen if we don't give you that money? And so yep. we have that piece yep. there. Right. And I don't like that exercise. I know. Right. Well, it's it's sort of a, oh, thanks, here you go, go for it. You know, y'all right. yeah, worked it out. I don't like the, I mean, you guys know, I'm like, I mean, I 
commissioner. We budget a certain amount of money because that's what those line items. That's what that's we'd what like to do. That's what we would like to spend that money on. Try and, try and, and to be less a little comfortable, proactive right, here. And less comfortable. Right, and those line items. And then you've got some other unmet needs. Right. If you have to right. grab Peter to pay Paul. Exactly. So maybe should we talk a little bit more about that at long range planning? Or do you guys want to? I think this has like, to come from finance. I think that, and with maybe like a, a one slide overview from long range as to the history, but the majority of it, I think, should, okay. come, should come from finance. How do you want to have me and Todd? Work together to, to put the. However, you guys. Together. You just want us to go for I it. I think maybe like a brief history, and, and maybe I can ask Nick to steal a couple of slides from Nick. He's presented I've on this one got, million yeah, times. I've so, got a couple of slides. Um, of mine. And yeah. then just why they're higher and why we want to use the impact fees. Do we want to cover why we want to use the impact fees and just have them do the. Maybe we talk about what the, the deficit facts. is in yeah. the amount. And right. Then that makes sense. It's our request from okay. the board. That's that's the part that is board business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, so Kate, if you could just do like one or two slides on why the numbers are higher, and then we can do the impact fee. And what I would like to be able to do, because I went back and watched the meeting about the public safety building overage, and a lot of what the town councilors have said that they liked is that it was so transparent. And so they weren't surprised. I think we've been very transparent, but even though we think we've been transparent, we've gotten feedback from counselors <coughs> recently about other subjects that have claimed that we have not been. So I'm gonna just provide links to everything. I'll give them the final report so they have all oh, that. I should email that out. Um, I just brought it. I and we'll give them plenty of time to review that. So I'll, I'll share that a couple of like next week or this week. So it's, we're we're the ones who define what? why we're over and where and what that's all about, and then the then the finance committee can say and therefore right. Our right. Ultimate you make our yeah. ask. Just yes. we I just um, in terms of communication, it, it's just curious to me that that's their um, concern because we we've been discussing this for months and we have the joint finance committee and we've been working on that as a goal and so it just makes me wonder what the distinction is between the other um, like the public safety building for example how are they getting that information in a way that's more palatable to them than the way we're providing it and and what could be done differently yeah. I think it's a good question I don't know I'm all I'm doing I just want to preempt and make like they're going to have questions. They're going to have concerns. I do not want any of their concerns to be that we haven't shared information. No, I don't either. So right. that's what I'm trying to be like proactive. That's a good yeah, and and could it, but I think it's a good, anything good point. Updates. Could yeah. it be the turnover in in the folks on the council? Well, we haven't had a joint finance meeting. We have since the new two new members. Mm, yeah, they haven't even had their first finance meeting. meeting. It's next week. I mean, I could see how there might be a disconnect there if somebody's mm -hmm. coming in the door new and they haven't seen it before. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the new people is on finance. That's who's yeah. That's who's on finance. So that could be, you know, some place where, yeah. it, like you said earlier, it, it would behoove us to go back a ways and catch people up and make sure that they, right. that we're not taking uh, for, granted for granted that they already know right. what we've been talking about. good about that. I think yeah. she would yeah, educate herself yeah. on Definitely. that. So, and we can meet with her. Okay. All right, cool. So we go with that. So yep, I, I'm I'll happy to do, I, why don't I put um, just a couple slides together? It yeah, just has a you want to share that with then... me, whatever you have. Okay. And this is for February 12th. 12th. Look, it's right there on the calendar. It says growth and enrollment analysis. Okay. Cool. Just conscious of time. See, my problem is it just says 6 o'clock. It doesn't say 6 o'clock <laughs> until... It's 6 to 9. That's how they're going to get you. Yeah. 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 On there. You better eat dinner Kate's. beforehand. <laughs> I'm going to have... Which like, none of us can do because we all have meetings that start at least, you know, 3, 30, 4 o'clock. Well, maybe we can have food <laughs> done up. That might do, be a We're good, doing that on yeah. Thursday also because yeah. okay. we know that, like, yeah. there are two, we gotta, policy, we gotta there's policy. two committee meetings. Yeah. Before the workshop, before the board. So oh, yeah, that's what I was. Always or not, what I was concerned. I wasn't thinking, thinking of that. Well, well, you know, if we're hangry, <laughs> we're it's not a good time to be making decisions. No, decision making <laughs> falls short, and we uh, 
Yeah, I think school nutrition department is right. going to cater us a lovely meal. I had yes. some of their soup today accidentally. It was wonderful. I wandered into the kitchen. So you accidentally I really ate soup. Job. I did. I, I was standing nice. there and I and I was in you the middle the right of a business the right conversation time. and there was soup and it was great. Very cool, budget process. So two things we wanted to cover as part of this um, was to go through the calendar mm -hmm. and also just to get a debrief here. from Kate. Um, and I don't know, if Diane, if you sat in any of the sessions, the listening sessions. I only sat in on the middle school, school one. Because middle school, one. Because yes. Because I was still the middle school principal at yes, that point. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So just real quick on the calendar, I, I sent you guys an email a couple weeks ago with a calendar and some notes that I think I said about 24 hours too soon uh, because all of the things that I had said were gonna happen are pretty much now not happening because town, town council's preference is to stick with the schedule that we used last year. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see in my email, I said we pretty much have all of May to do communications. That's no longer the case, so um, I don't know, I mean, I guess if there's anything in here that you guys don't agree with, I'm still I'm going to continue to push back on the department meeting um, that we have. Where the finance town council finance committee has us come in as a department instead of as a exactly like, shared. Is that this team. on the sixth? It's the and that would be April. April fifteenth. The fifteenth, yeah. yeah. And the reason why I want to push back on that a little bit is because I think in the spirit of like collaboration and they've said they're going to come to the leadership council meetings so that just to me feels redundant uh -huh. if they do actually have representation at those budget workshop days yeah they're going to know so much about our budget and oh, they're going to come to the budget workshops this that year? was our request that was our, nice. and they ag wonderful. agreed to yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know yeah. we've got one in the daytime and one right. in the evening right um Tuesday morning kind of takes the place of March 24th and 25th leadership meeting okay yeah so I mean uh, just to piggyback on what Sarah was saying I I did send her a calendar where I thought I knew what was going on and she and I went over it and we were all like ready Super ready to excited. roll and the, I said I'll just run down and talk to the town manager tomorrow and make sure that you know, this is that this is what we want to do because in my initial conversations with him and Colette and Ruth and everybody, it was like, yeah, we really need to do this sooner. And um, the upshot of that conversation was, no, we're actually we want to stick to the same timetable that we had last year. Um, we did manage to get a couple of things in a little bit better order. Um, one of them being the way that the school board has a vote before the town council does. Mm. Um, and it's always been a little bit of a toss up because if at their final vote, the council says we wanna make changes in the budget and the school department's gonna get X dollars, then the, the school board actually has to meet and allocate that change. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we shouldn't meet before that and say, okay, here's our final budget. We're bringing it to the mm -hmm. council. Here's what we're voting on. Y'all take it and do and, and do with it as you need to do. Yeah. So we have a vote, if you look into April, let's see. Let's see. Okay. The second, the first reading? The school board's second reading is on May 7th. And then yeah. the town council's is actually two weeks later, yeah. if mm -hmm. we go by the normal calendar. And, and then, we have managed to keep the, the public hearings and the votes. That was the other too, thing that we accomplished for both town and again? school. Yeah. The public hearings are separate from the votes, so you're not having the public come in, make a comment, and then right. have to vote like immediately. You're, you're voting, That's a good change. Yeah. which sort right. of gives the perception, it may not be the case, but it gives the perception that you haven't really processed what they're saying yep. and, and put yep. it into your thinking before you vote. Does this, Sarah, take into account our policy? I know that that was one thing that we had discussed. Like, I still think the policy probably needs to be looked at for the timeline. It's, yeah, it's, on the, it's on the agenda, the, the, list. Public, the list of the parcel yeah. of yeah, yeah. things that need to be 
there's there's some statutory stuff. The that public needs to input. Be so we no, the, uh, we work backwards from the date from the ballot vote day. Yep. And our policy dictates like a certain timeline, and it's forty five days or something. Like it's specific. It says very okay. specifically the number of days yep. that we are supposed to have in between referendum gotcha. and our yep. second reading. Mm -hmm. But we we like can't working on the town's timeline. We we cannot mm -hmm. abide by that mm -hmm. timeline. Right, because we have to go back and make adjustments. Right. Yeah. There's also yeah. some other things like it's technically supposed to be presented to the finance committee first, and then the finance committee presents the board, which we kind of we sort of fold it together, yeah. right? So I mean, this is the we've technically been out of compliance with our policy for a couple of years. So we just need to rewrite the policy because it doesn't fit. Yeah, so I think what we need, what we should be doing. Well, and I think we we talked about this last year where we refreshed our process. When George came on board, he shifted up, and he and Tom worked together to change some dates and to you know make it flow better in terms of how to produce a good budget. But then the policy was in, you know, so in the opposition policy didn't to that. that. Yeah. And I don't think anybody ever thought, oh wait, what about this? You mm -hmm. know? Um, uh, but then the the other thing that happened around that same time was that Tom Hall sat down with the. Um, legal counsel and said okay well here's a statute about school budgets here's our town ordinance here's the school board's policy what the heck you know how can we be in compliance with all these things and so it might behoove us to have that kind of a conversation again mm -hmm. um, if we refresh the policy and make it work for what we're doing now does it also does this timeline also address absentee voting so I emailed Tony you about that and mm. she said to me, they cannot return the ballots until until the, the budget, there's a vote on that. Until the town council, until the town council, council the approves the technical budget. The problem with that, though, is that they can't return them. They can take them. They, but they can take them, and, and they can certainly them fill them out and seal it. They just can't actually return it. Right. Yeah, so the town a, won't accept the ballot back until there's a voted budget. Right. But there's nothing to stop me from taking the ballot out and writing my what I think before there's a final number. Right. And if you're absentee, and I'm sure this is a really small percentage, right? You might get it, do it immediately, send it back without even knowing, and just maybe skip that question. So, so I think the, we're talking about a small percentage. Of so the absentee ballot would not have the budget number right. on it. But the ballot the, doesn't ever have the number. Okay. Yeah. What it says is. Do you approve the budget that was passed by the town council on May, whatever the date was? Gotcha. Right. And so you're flying in the dark unless you're standing in the booth and you have the numbers in front of you on that little piece of paper. It right. says this is what the budget is. Right. Okay. So part of why we wanted to move it earlier is to give us more time to communicate that to people who did, which is a lot of people who were right. early in Scarborough. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, did Tony have any thoughts about I don't suppose you can send any information out with that. It's probably like a legal thing. Right. You know, yeah. And throw food flyers in there. Don't forget to vote yes. <laughs> no, I didn't need that. Thanks. <laughs> Just trust us. It'll be a good budget. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Okay. I didn't ask. Yeah. I'm assuming that it's something that just has to go on its own and can't be influenced. Okay. I so just I bring it up because we it was something we had talked about. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know how to. Um, any other questions on this? Or concerns? Is this final? Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Final from, as far as I'm concerned, it is. I shared okay. it with Tom and Colette. Awesome. Um, so I'll and ask Liam what the process is for getting. play on it. So. We are, on, on the school side, we are abiding by this calendar. Okay. okay. And we are in the midst, as you can see, of all our January mm -hmm. stuff. This starts this week, and next week is going to be a big one. And we've already mm -hmm. done a bunch of work with our leadership team. Um, so we're, we're in full steam. And what Tom did say was that he, he was fine with what, the way it was laid out, but that he would need to talk with his finance committee as well. And if they haven't met yet, I suppose they could look at it and say they wanted to make changes. Okay. So should we, I just want to get these, the big dates in people's calendars as soon mm. as possible. Yeah, thank you. So I'm wondering, I, I can, um, 
at least get them in the school board's calendar, and mm -hmm. then after they meet, we can ask like either myself or Leanne can share them with the, the council. Yeah. Okay. I so would definitely. I'll go send that Kelly route. a note on that if she can do. It. Okay. Cool. All right, and then last but not least, just the debrief so far in the listening sessions. So for that, oh, it's not very nice because this has a to do. For that, I brought paper because you know I'm like this is paper here. Diane's trying to help me oh, shift gosh. my thinking. Save trees. Paper thing. This hurts every time I I'm, see yeah. it. Came. I'm trying to trying to keep the <laughs> trying to keep the. Um, Paper, paper companies, yeah, yeah. You get the yeah. paper yes. mills in business. Paper mills. Right. Great. So what uh, you've got here is you've got a summary one pager on the top, and then you've got uh, detail pages behind it, about ten pages. The detail is really detailed. It's literally my notes as I'm typing along while we're listening to folks talk. Um, I did clean up a few things that were redundant, but not much. I mostly left it the way it was. Um, I'm hoping that the um, major themes sheet will actually add some value when we're going through and reflecting on what we're looking for for investments. Um, I don't think that we heard anything that was a big surprise to mm -hmm. us. Um, I mean, Sandy was doing this for the first time with the staff here in Scarborough, but I mean, you, you yep. were there in the room when he was saying, yep, you know, it's this is you not crazy stuff. Yep. This is stuff that every school district is dealing with. Yep. Um, we think there's some really neat ideas that we can take away from here. Some of them are going to be things that we can do with very little money and just a turn of focus. Um, some of them would require money. Um, and, you know, whether that's new money or diverted money, that's the questions that the leadership team is going to tackle as we keep going through this process. Um, pretty much everybody whose staff talked to us was either in the room or floating in and out as, as need arose um, in these sessions. So they were aware of what their staff was saying about their building and their programs, and um, also the leadership team as a whole has taken it a few minutes to reflect on this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we've shared it. Uh, we haven't had time to actually like go through line by line with the whole leadership team, but we've um, sort of counted on them to go through and, and do that offline a little bit. They have access to the same information, and they've reviewed it with us. Okay. So I think that, um, for me, one of the things that we were able to do and, and I think was really helpful la uh, last year was when we were putting those investment things up, you know, that thing with the blocks on it, the color blocks that Julie was so fond of. Yeah. Um, it was your level services budget, and then it was your reduced level services because you know you're going to change some things and reduce some things and some people are retiring. And then it was the um, required or mandated additional services and then it was we'd like this investment one investment mm -hmm. two investment three and with each of those I think it was this team that came up with the idea of putting a little flag next to it to say this is responsive to staff mm -hmm. requests mm -hmm. or staff feedback this is responsive to student safety mm -hmm. this is you know supportive of um, community feedback we won't have quite so much community feedback to work from because we all decided with joint finance that we just didn't really feel like that was good bang for the buck, those listening sessions before the budget. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that there won't be community feedback in other ways, right? right. If, if you guys are all getting an email every five minutes that says, darn it, you really need to focus on K2 foreign language, then that's community feedback. So um, this is obviously for you to take away and, and read through. Do you want to just take a few minutes and, and look and see if there's any quick questions? We've used up most of our time. Kate, are you okay with uh, yeah. our next, not the one this Thursday, but our first meeting in February as part of the committee updates? Maybe I would share just some of these. Sure, absolutely. Are you comfortable with that? Um, I don't think that's a problem. How do you feel about it, Diane? Do you think the leadership team would have any issues about that. I have promised them that we'll say 
as often as we can that because a teacher says something is important doesn't mean it's un unimportant, right. but it also has to be passed through that prioritization process where your leaders are charged with figuring out if we can't do A, B, C, D, and E, then you know which one of those things can we actually accomplish or how many of those things can we accomplish and does it make sense in the K-12 right. leadership picture? Yeah. So I would want to sort of throw some kind of Disclaimer. Yeah, I guess you'd call it a disclaimer. I mean, last year we were, you know, we're so grateful to staff for coming up with all these amazing ideas. And when you're sitting in the room, you're going, oh, yeah, totally, I got to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting my checkbook out and April's yeah, writing checks. I said, <laughs> I... But at the, the end, the Wentworth discretionary money, you guys. We just, they, <laughs> they were so was happy. So grateful. Yeah. Like, like literally. For 200 bucks. Just really. couldn't. Was it 200 yeah. bucks? It was $100. Oh, it was $100. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Made their day. Like, Made so their excited year. for well, what they could do. Yeah. Like, it's an acknowledgement. Like it doesn't do justice in terms of covering all of the needs, but yeah. it is an acknowledgement that we We appreciate that, that you're are, professionals you know, and you're working mm -hmm. hard and you're creative and, mm -hmm. yeah. So... Just some key themes to share. For you. I think, yeah, the key themes would be... They, they will not be surprising to you guys either, to the board either. Yep. Right. Um, you know, and and mm -hmm. I think they're themes that we're all definitely going to be looking at and addressing. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see if you look into the details that there's some stuff that maybe feels like it's a little bit more out in left field. Again, not right. bad ideas, but just ideas that might not be on our straight, right. straight right. line. And again, like, I don't think it's expected that everyone is going to agree all of the time, right, yeah. on mm -hmm. what would that best what is set of best learning conditions look like. possible, yeah. And what can we afford? Right. right. What is the um, adequate, adequate budget funds for newly developed programming? I see career pathways in there. I mean, we fully funded that role. Does that mean... Where are you? Oh, you must be at high school. Yeah. Oh, okay. So budgeted funds... Um, when we were at the high school, we were talking about programs that we had either sort of funded partially or not at all. And so STEM Robotics, we, um, we put budget money in for the teacher. Right. And we didn't really put extra money in for supplies. Um, it was part, we decided it would be part of the science budget, but we weren't really sure what the, you know, what things would cost or what they mm -hmm. would need or what they already had. We wanted that person to get on board to be able to develop the program to figure out what's what. Um, so what they've done is they've written grants and they've pulled together all kinds of different money sources and got donations and things, and they put together a pretty cool program um, but it, now it needs to fold fold into the regular budget. So if you have yes. consumables and things like that, they right. need to be part of the science budget. Um, Career Pathways had money from Bangor Savings and the money that um, SEF raised yeah. through their fund drive. Um, so they have about, I think it was like $6,200 it ended up being of just like donated money. Um, right. And it looks like that they're, they're using to have some after school programming that would cost additional so we don't expect that money to exist next year. So again, if you're going to keep running this program, and the beauty part of it is that with both of those programs, um, and, and really everything that you see here, they're new startups, and so now we've used this year to figure out, well, what does the budget look like? Yeah. What are the activities that you're going to yeah. need to do? What are the materials you're going to need? Um, and so next year we can say, yep, this is the price tag for that program. And I think the really difficult thing about this whole budget process is there's no idea that anyone moves forward that we say, oh, that's a terrible idea for right. kids. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. all great ideas, mm -hmm. right. Right? right? They would all improve the programming that we currently offer, yeah. right. you know? And so that's the difficult thing about making forced choices in a budget, yeah. right? It's, it's not uh, anyone saying, we disagree with your idea, but, you know, <clears throat> we have a lot of constraints that we're yeah. working with. Well, and I think, you know, to your point, Sarah, with the disclaimer, all it would really need to say is these are amazing ideas, you know, to the extent that we can develop resources to support them, 
we absolutely think this is awesome and we appreciate the feedback. Obviously, we have some restrictions on what we can spend, but this is going to be part of our thinking. Right. And, you know, and a very important part of our thinking because we've gone to that ground floor level to find out. Yeah. No, and I mean, like. and again, you're going to hear as a board, right? Yep. Like, what are all of those great ideas? And, and the ones that our building administrators are saying, wow, what a benefit this would be or that would be, you know? And then ultimately, as a board, you've got to decide where do you see our priorities? Yeah. And the, and the, yeah, it, they're, they're all the levels. Like, when mm -hmm. we're putting that investment list together, mm -hmm. you know, at the bottom of the investment list, there's all the things that the leadership council said was a cool idea, but they said, oh, you know, not this year because we're already asking for X dollars. Yeah. So there's, you know, at every level, there's a multitude of great ideas that we know aren't going to make it into the mm -hmm. top. That's, we did talk about the unmet needs. Yes, yeah, I think um, that's important to keep putting those To out articulate there. the unmet needs, not necessarily to have page and pages of, you know, here are all the things we can't have, but to remind the community that we've made choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Great meeting. Look at the time. Do you have anything else? Look at the time. Super Brilliant. Timely. Oh, and our one public comment are left. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So I will, um, I took a couple actions. I'll email Todd about the Pleasant Hill portables, put together a template for the presentation um, to town council workshop, and then I'll talk to Kelly about sending those invites out to the board. Okay. Um, Kelly is out. Yeah, she'll be back Thursday, on Thursday, right? Thursday. Yeah. yeah. So that's just two days. But today's already Tuesday. Yeah. I know. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure that out at, at about bedtime. Right? On Friday, um, you're going to be like a super happy girl because you're going to think it's only Thursday. <laughs> I'll just come in on Saturday, actually. Although these four-day weeks sometimes feel like seven-day weeks. Yeah. <laughs>